G'day everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the brand new shrinking earth theory as a possible way to explain everything that has occurred in the last 13,000 years. It is a complement to expanding earth. So the idea is if the earth is expanding, it can also settle periodically. So they go together. In this video, we are going to propose a step-by-step -step catastrophic hypothesis to explain exactly how this might have occurred. And everyone has their own opinion and that's fine too because no one knows everything for sure, sure of what happened before our current civilization was reborn. This can help to explain ancient historical enigmas such as the Universal Flood, which seems to have possibly been composed out of rising sea levels suddenly, but also periodically for several thousand years after the end of the Ice Ages, and this might be slowly ongoing. A while back, I made a video that Atlantis, if you want to call it that, or what is left of the Doggerland Empire, the UK, is still sinking into the ocean, with provinces of Wales lost in historical memory. Just look at Scara Bray. Surely it was abandoned due to sea level rises. The sea is almost lapping up against the ruins and has been possibly since it was abandoned, as they feared one day they would wake up underwater. How to explain the so-called tremendous Peruvian Tiwanaku uplift if it occurred? A city once coastal, now located high in the mountains. Arthur Poznanski, in the early 20th century, who studied the area intensively, concluded that Tiwanaku was the cradle of American civilization. He said that settlers arrived over 10,000 years ago, and it was warm and agricultural. It even has a port, but no water which was either that of a once much larger Lake Titicaca or the coast. He stated that thereafter an uplift occurred and when it was pushed into mountainous regions, Tiwanaku people migrated away and founded centers all over the Americas in different directions, but with a common heritage. If this occurred, I suppose shrinking the amount of available land space on the planet could have resulted in the dramatic uplift. Massive worldwide geological upheaval in the past could explain why Stone Age people seem to have found so many minerals on the surface, untouched by any previous civilization. The Atlantis legend records furious earthquakes which preceded a sea level rise, washing everything away. No one has sadly yet come up with a suitable ice age mechanism for why the pole has shifted and I believe the entire ice age was actually largely the pole simply shifting from one spot to another or the truth might be part pole shift part ice age. In similar ways the future of geology might be part plate tectonics and part expanding earth. So there is not one overriding mechanism, but something reflecting the complexity of reality, multiple causes for everything. Of course, everyone has absolutely their own opinion, and this is just mine, and I totally respect yours as well. Now, let's look at historical enigma number one, the flood, and let's try to explain that. As a thought experiment, what is the easiest way? to raise sea levels, or any level. You can put more water in, I suppose melting glaciers, or you can just squeeze the container and the level rises. I think both might have happened. Glaciers have melted, but also the container has been squeezed. That is, the Earth's available area has possibly been reduced. In fact, sea levels are today not really rising very much at all. Simply see for yourself if the sea has risen at your local beach. It's as simple as that. The current idea is that islands of the Maldives are sinking into the ocean due to sea level rises. Or are they actually just volcanic islands which are sinking naturally? Because otherwise, everywhere should be sinking equally. It does make me wonder. I'm very excited 
by this theory. It is a new theory. It's going to have problems, but I feel it explains away a whole host of paradoxes and changes that the Earth underwent prior to the beginning of human history. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother mentioning it. It is only when things settle down, and it seems that the sea levels and ice reached their present position, mainly just over Greenland in about 5000 BC, that history recommenced. Somehow it restabilized after some catastrophic shock which sent everything bananas for many thousands of years. This could be why we have not much archaeology, or any archaeology, between uh, Gebekli Tepe and, say, about 3000 BC. It's, it's all been uh, washed away by sea level rises. In the previous video, we mentioned that a pole shift is really the only way to explain so much tropical vegetation in Siberia only a short time ago. Observe that placing the rotational pole around about the southern tip of Greenland is a great way to explain the lack of glaciation in eastern Siberia, as well as tropical conditions here during the Ice Age. The pole shift also explains why mammoths are still dug up frozen, even if the ice spread triggered by the catastrophe should have receded with the end of the Ice Age. Since it hasn't, the pole has shifted or may have shifted. That's one of the pros of the pole shift argument. There may also have been former warm water currents in the Pacific warming up the Bering Strait during the supposed Ice Age times, but we don't know. We do know Greenland was a refrigerator, so either ice formed around it in a circle due to its coldness, or because the pole was once there, as Hapgood suggested. Charles Hapgood explained pole movements as crust slippage, but there is perhaps an even easier way to explain this. I call it Sudden Earth Implosion Theory, which had five stages of catastrophe. Number one. Firstly, there may have been a peak in volcanic activity as part of the natural cycle of Earth's core. Two, magma spills out onto the surface everywhere, releasing pressure from the inner mantle. This is actually this was actually happening in, in Victoria about 15,000 years ago, just before what I call the Earth shrink. Volcanoes erupting all over the place, releasing mantle fluids and sending gold to the surface. And this became the fourth biggest volcanic plain on Earth. Today, there are no active volcanoes in Australia anywhere, so this is periodic. Three. Without adequate supporting pressure from the mantle, the crust contracts under the Earth's gravity, felt as wild earthquakes. 4. The changing mass distribution also changes the net angular momentum, which then shifts the axis of rotation, hence pole shift. 5. Sea levels rise due to the same volume of water now covering a slightly smaller new Earth. In short, a slightly smaller container must now hold the same amount of water. Hence, this event is remembered as earthquakes, then a flood in the Atlantis legend. Memories of this event seem to have been current just before the Great Pyramid was built because Egyptian legend records that astronomers warned the builder, whatever king he was, some say a guy named Surid, that another deluge was coming which would wash away Egypt. They then locked Egyptian knowledge into the Great Pyramid and made it deluge proof as well as earthquake proof. They obviously wanted this to be Egypt's future permanent accessory. This relates to Tiwanaku as well. If the Tiwanaku people's civilization was not uplifted and Poznansky was wrong, then why build a civilization on a mountain? Were they worried that another flood would occur? Why did so many Native American civilizations have a 260-day year, which they married with the 365-day year like interconnecting cogs? Was it of our present Earth? The old Egyptian calendar had 360 days. The reason these older calendars have fewer days than the present 365 could simply be that we now have more days per year. In other words, 
a smaller Earth is spinning at the same speed of the Earth that was once much larger, having retained the former Earth's angular momentum. So there are now more days covering the same time period. Of course, this means our days are faster than they once were, which might explain why so many people have odd sleep cycles or feel there are not enough hours in the day and have catch-up naps. Let's assume the Earth went from a rotational size of 360 days to 365 days in a final outburst and rise of sea levels. That's when the sea levels stopped rising, around 5,000 years ago, and when civilizations began anew with finally stable societies. A series of catastrophes is really the only way to explain why ancient texts contain descriptions of inconceivable super technology, aerial warfare, even space warfare on a scale which today cannot be envisaged. They seem to have been aware of the number of chromosomes remembered as the paired up ribs with Adam lacking one, hence man has the Y chromosome instead of an X, as pointed out in an earlier video, and an absolute myriad of other details including that a civilization of giants once roamed the earth, presumably with huge heads and intelligences, and that all the world was one language before the flood, as today it's all in English. It is to be noted that when sea levels stopped increasing and were at their present levels about 8,000 years ago, that is when civilization actually begins. So, we are in a plateau of stability, civilization having taken advantage of a window of opportunity. If the Earth starts moving again, civilization is possibly just going to end, and we will return to the Dark Ages fairly quickly. Under this scenario, it is the Earth itself which is stopping or interrupting man's continual upward drive towards the conquest of the stars, a conquest we may have actually achieved tens of millennia ago, if the Indian Mahabharata is a guide. One of the consequences of a larger Earth is, of course, more gravity. In fact, the supposed continental drift has all been suggested to be scars of Earth's expansion, with the oceans as the expansion joints, and with the continents as the older parts. It has been suggested that gravity was lower before on a smaller Earth, hence huge insects and dinosaurs who would no longer on today's Earth be able to bear their own weight. There are many possibilities. In fact, many stars actually randomly change size, one of the causes of variable stars. So if the Earth has an inner sun, as it seems to, then this variable size change could cause what is known as earthquakes. I have just been frustrated by existing theories which fail to explain every piece of evidence. Earth impact theories such as Carolina Bays happened about 41,000 years ago or much earlier. The dates do vary considerably, whereas this event that we are talking about was about 13,000 years ago. None of the impact theories explain why the mammoths are still frozen long after the catastrophe is over, and I feel this one does as it allows a pole shift, a result of the implosion of the size of the planet. Thanks for watching. Please leave your comments below, thumbs up and share. I'm really interested in knowing what you think or other comments on whatever you like. Cheers.